Gina Blom Presnell from the Knitting Lodge community and just welcome to our first episode of what's this called? <laughs> we're off to Finish a great your frog it. Finish your frog it. Um, uh, that's what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our collection of um, unfinished projects and I'm sure you might have a couple. We've got several so we're going to start off with our own projects today and we hope that you can bring in your projects into the future episodes but let me introduce this. I'm Christina as I said from the Knitting Lodge community and with us are moderators Patrick Liddy and Heather Sterling, both very active in the community and great contributors. So longtime knitters too. Heather likes to knit extremely complicated projects with beads. And <laughs> Patrick is a famous knitter. You might not yet have heard of, but you will soon because he's about to have his work published in a new um, publication. So welcome. Welcome aboard. We're going to start off with our first project. Patrick, you brought something to the table? I did. Well, I figured ladies first, but I'll go first. Why not? Um, so I brought Via Hante, which I don't know. I should probably brighten the thing, right? Um, anyway, so this is Via Hante so far. And Via Hante is what? A shawl? It is a three-dimensional shawl wrap thing. Scarf, it yeah. Up, yeah, it's like it's huge. It comes out to be like a big triangular tube and you can either wear it over your body or you can like wrap it around your neck and stuff like that. So um, it's kind of like anthropomorphic because you can be it can be a, a couple different things. So while it's beautiful, it's simple and lovely and I love the yarn but this has been hanging around since um, December and after my eight weeks of nonstop crochet madness, um, I'm finally looking at all my knitting projects like, hmm, do I really want to continue making that? And I have all of this lovely yarn that, to make it with, but I really, um, yeah, I don't really know yet. So the story of the yarn is this is purchased from Miss Christina at Yarn Mountain, and this came in a kit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this came in a kit called Transitions, and it's beautiful. The colorway is amazing. I don't know if you can see the colors, but these are the three different balls so far. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was River Rocks. Yep, River. I actually have that, too. <laughs> okay, so you have a fabulous investment in yarn. I know, that's what I'm saying. Like, I have this four great skeins of yarn, and I'm only halfway through the first skein, and theoretically, I would not really be heartbroken frogging it back, but the construction is something that would be um, really astounding when it's done. Um, and the color, the transitions themselves would be really, really nice. So I'm torn between finishing it and frogging it. I have plenty of room now in my queue um, after clearing out a couple things yesterday, so I could easily leave it and come back to it, or I could pull it apart and find a new home for that yarn. So, thoughts? Um, a couple of questions. So mm -hmm. you've got a great investment in the yarn and you like the yarn. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hearing. You yeah. like the project. I do like the project, but like I said, I would not necessarily be heartbroken not doing it. It's an extensive project. It would take a long time to complete, and I don't necessarily think... I don't know if I would be 100% happy with it at the end, like trying to visualize what it would be like on me. How, how much yarn is it? Oh, my God. Well, the pattern calls for over, like, 17,000 yards of lace weight. Because I've been started this pattern, too, so that's why I know, and I've been looking at it. And I've been looking at the reviews and people commenting. A lot of people have frogged it that Ooh. I saw. And Just because the, it was too much of an endeavor. 17,000 yards? Yeah. They, that yeah. Is, that's not even legal. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's done on, like, size 6, so the lace weight is really loose. It's not tight. Yeah, I'm doing, this is fingering the ears, so my concept was to just do it. Um, I don't even know what size needles these are. I think, these are I think you were on sixes, because I was looking sixes at your project. <laughs> yeah, these are on sixes, and I was just going to basically use up the 1,200 yards that I had and just kind of... 17,000, no, I think it's 1,700, not 17,000. That was... That yeah, 1,700, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, 20,000 yards is like uh, around the world a couple times. Go, I'm um, going to knit a house cozy. Heather's yeah. crazy. Heather gets her numbers I'm mixed up. <laughs> um, no, so it's supposed to be, yeah, I think 1,700. And I really only had 1,200 yards of this yarn. Um, and as beautiful as, as it is, I'm kind of, I don't know, now, now that we're talk, talking about it, I'm like, man, I should just frog. <laughs> well, I don't know how the transitions will look. That's what I was having problems with. I started one, too, and... It was a yarn that was multicolored, 
it's very hard once you get to the stock of nuts to get a lot of pooling. So I didn't know how, if you wanted the pooling or if you didn't or how it looks because I'm very temperamental about my pooling. I don't like it pooling as much as it, it does. <laughs> and you're referring to the pooling that the color does in a mm -hmm. hand-painted yarn. Okay. Yeah. Just to clarify that. Sorry. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to really worry too much about pooling. It's just kind of a thing. It's like a property of the yarn. You, you kind of, when it's especially hand-painted yarns like this, you kind of just have to... Embrace it. It is what it is kind mm -hmm. of moment. Mm -hmm. Unless, you know, unless you're making, trying to make a pair of matching socks, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> I did have that problem recently. <laughs> um, they weren't the same color. They just... Yeah. Didn't really match. Right. <laughs> at all, ever. Um, okay, so what, so what are our thoughts? We've got yarn that we love. We have a project that we... <laughs> why has it been sitting around since December? Um, well, yeah, I mean, after I finished my Christmas knitting, it was just something that I had picked up, and I thought, oh, I can use, you know, I can finally use this yarn. And I thought it would be something that I could carry around because it's, it's all round and round and round knitting, just straight knitting. Right. You can just sit and do it. Well, I never sat and did it and then after January starting with my crochet projects I've been straight out this is the first time I've touched it since December probably and um, it's not really pulling me in like it did when I first thought about it I was like oh my god this cool three-dimensional triangular shaped thing now I'm like eh. so okay so it doesn't sound to me like you're really in love with this project. Not anymore. Um, now that we're talking about it. <laughs> it sounds to me like you have a lot of yarn. Could you break that yarn up into different projects? That you well, do? each ball has a color going to the next ball of yarn. That's why they transition well together. I would love to use all four of these together. If I broke them up, it would look kind of awkward um, given their colorways mm -hmm. and their similarities. So I think I would want to use all 1,200 yards in something else. But there are another sh number of shells out there that I could easily use 1,200, 1200 yards for. So. so what do you think, Heather? I'm thinking frog it because that's a lot of yarn for one project, and if you're not engaged through that, with that entire project, you're going to lose interest. Or you just learn to hate knitting. I'm not sure which comes first. <laughs> I kind of agree, and maybe... Yeah, something that transitions. I, I love the idea that you're wanting to have the yarns transition together. And I was looking at that too, I actually, because I have the same color weight. I was like, hmm, maybe I'll do it the opposite way of Patrick and see how it turns out. I just, I wanted something when I was looking at mine. I wanted it a little bit longer. But yeah, I think you should frog. <laughs> I can see it frogging it because you're not highly like, oh, I want to do this. I want to see what it's gonna be like. Okay, so. The vote is frog it, frog it, frog it. All right. Okay, no, I'm gonna say frog it on this one. <laughs> if Heather's in agreement, Patrick's in agreement. Yep. Out of here. I guess I'm gonna have to frog it. <laughs> okay. We do have a question coming in from Gina. Gina, we can see your question. Um, that's the good news. <laughs> um, so that the video screen randomly disappears. Is this happening to anybody else? Is this on your? Um, I guess we don't have a way of knowing. Um, for the question and answer app, I turned that on. Um, I didn't have it up the entire time, so that should be working correctly. I can look, look into it so we can see your questions now, which tells me that it is working correctly. Um, if you have another question, I guess just put it in there. I don't know if I answered it or not. Because I, I can see both of us, all three of us, fine when it, we're talking, but I don't know if it's different when you're not watching it through the live one instead right. of just watching it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, if you have another question there, go ahead and shoot it in if we did not answer it because I'm not able to see on the chat at the moment, only the question and answer app. So I hope that works. Okay, so we've got one project down. Are we going to work on anything this year? <laughs> <laughs> <No>. uh, <laughs> I brought one to the table. This is um, from a knit along last March. I'm just going to hold up this big pile of yarn. But better than that, I'm going to tell you about it. This is the Ides of March um, Knit Along, hosted by designer Debbie Lake. I was really excited to do that because I, I have a lot of respect for Debbie and the work that she does. So, uh, and I have to say this project was beautiful. Um, I took on a little too much with this project. There was It was very involved, and I had a lot going on. Um, I did um, bring a couple of photos to share with you. So I'm going to share those now. Here's... Um, Here's the first one, and you can see this top lace. It's beautiful. And this project's about 1,200 yards, 
Um, so there's a lot of yarn in it. Um, that first lace portion, um, I really, really liked. In fact, I used that in a sock design later. Of course I did. Um, <laughs> and it, this is a feroce shawl. So it, it um, sits around the shoulders like a sweater without sleeves um, and hangs down. It's very, very beautiful. And I got um, this far with it. This is how far I got. Uh, and then I was distracted. So I was only about, I wasn't to the halfway point yet. The finished, um, finished shawl is probably twice that length um, with a whole nother lace detail underneath of it. You can see the lace patterning starting down um, the back there. And it continues on the way down. And then the front of it just um, comes down with two. I'm showing you with my hands, but I've got my screen share on. <laughs> um, all right, so let me stop that really quickly. Okay, there we go. So that's where I'm at with it. It has been sitting there since last probably April, um, so a year now. It's been sitting along. I have um, what looks like the, the rest of the yarn balled up. It's all fingering weight yarn, beautiful yarn. This pretty blue with the sparkles. Um, this is, here's the thing, I would never wear this shawl. <laughs> it's a beautiful shawl. It would make a, it would make a, it would make a great gift for somebody else to wear. Or I might wear it on the 4th of July because it's blue and sparkly. But other than that, <laughs> I would not wear this because it's not my personal style. Not to say it's not a beautiful project. The lace patterns in it are exquisite. It's a lot of fun to knit. It requires a ton of concentration. I don't have a lot of that time available. So what do I do with this thing? I've got 1,200 yards of yarn. Half of it are in the sweater, in the shawl now. Um, I would have to go back and decipher the pattern to find out exactly where I was at because I've, I did not keep copious notes. So that's my backstory, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Um, well, I would definitely say, I mean, the yarn is pretty, but as soon as you said, I would never wear this, uh, my brain instantly went to frog it, that's it, get rid of it, um, only because I think, when, especially when I'm knitting something, unless it's specifically for somebody they've picked out the design themselves or, um, you know, it's a commission that I'm being paid for to make, you know, that, that's not my decision, that's somebody else's. But I'm that's I'm knitting it for a purpose or crocheting it for a purpose. If I'm going to just make something, even even to give it as a gift, if I don't even like it at all, then I'm, I, I, my heart's just not going to be in it. And as I'm going to be stitching it, even to complete it, even a year in with your halfway, almost halfway done, you, your heart, I can already hear your heart's not even in it. So why would you? you you're going to be knitting and you're going to be like, oh, I I totally I. Why am I knitting this? And you're going to get to the end and you'll be like, okay, it's done, but for what purpose? And I've used up all of that beautiful yarn I could have used on something else. I mean, 1,200 yards, that's three pairs of socks. They would all match. <laughs> uh, you're right. You're saying. right. You're absolutely right. And when I knit gifts for people, it's usually something I've selected specifically for that person, you know, to, mm -hmm. to suit their tastes and stuff. And this would sort of be knitting it and thinking, well, I'll just give it to somebody. That's sort of where I'm at with it. Um, Heather? Yeah, I agree a lot with Patrick about that. Yeah, it's like there's so many shawl patterns out there that you can find one that you're going to love or a scarf that you're going to love that's going to look great with that um, lace, the, a lace pattern with that glittery. Like even taking that lace pattern that you like at the top, doing that as something, as a scarf, or using it somewhere in a neck, attire. <laughs> See, now you're getting me to design something new. And yeah, I kinda like hey, that idea. That, yeah it, you can, I like, I like me, I'm, I like to play around. I don't really love sticking to a pattern. Let me play and let's doodle this or that and you come with the, your, something in your own that's going to look great with that glitter of yarn. Okay, it's frogged. <laughs> Done. Frogging it. Sorry, Debbie. <laughs> Heather, what'd you bring? Okay, I brought two. The first one is um from let's see when when was this? Oh, this has been so long ago. Um, September two thousand and twelve. I started a daybreak. A daybreak, a daybreak shawl. So, so we're all we're all in these big shawls and bailing out. <laughs> well, I love this, and I I really want to come back to it. I just I've been so busy. I love those colors. That's the weirdest uh, one, right? It, it's all these... Um, let's see. It's the clock... 
one which one that, you know, let me see if I can that's I think you're thinking of it's like the little wedges yeah they're little strips not the it. not the clockwork gotcha okay sorry but um the colors the reason why I love this one too is I'm using a metal and tosh light or metal and tosh and Stephen loves tosh so it's a purpley purple I mean brown so I think it goes with the pattern and then I have the bright crazy tealy Ooh. color that <gasps> is the stripe. So this <laughs> original we have to forgive stuff. our sound effects here. <laughs> this is Ella Ray Lace Merino. Mm -hmm. So they're both soft and yummy and I think the reason I stopped at this was because let's see. It was summer of yeah. So it was after spring it's like I was just busy at work and then I had a wedding present to do and all this other stuff, so it's like it's been nice and neat, and I put it in its nice little bag so it wouldn't get lost and wouldn't get damaged. It's just I totally forgot about it, and when you get like let's find some frog or keep, it's like I it's like oh yeah, I have that daybreak <laughs> that I could bring, so that's why I brought it. Well, I have to say that I love the color play in that the striping with those mm -hmm. two colors together is brilliant. Why did you start the project? Was it just something you appealed to you? Uh, I had the um, Stephen Loves Tosh, and I was like, I want to knit something that Stephen Loves project for it, because it's the yarns named after him. And I started it because I loved it. I looked at the daybreak months and times and times, and I finally found a yarn that I could use with it that would look great. Because at first I think I would think I was using I wanted to use like Noro, but then I got out of my Noro phase and I was like that's too hard on my skin. So when I saw the I got one of the yards the L Ray I got in a swap I was like oh this will look great with the Stephen West yarn. Okay. So at one point you loved it. Yes. Do you still I love still, it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and actually, since I found it, I'm like, ooh, let's figure out where I am, because it's pretty easy to figure out with this one, because it's just stripes. <laughs> it's just pretty much more looking for, where did I put the pattern? <laughs> okay, so you need a new copy of the pattern to finish it. Yeah, I have an electronic copy somewhere, so I'd have to just find it. <laughs> okay. And reprint it. And how long has it been sitting there, you said, since... 2012. Like a year and a half. <laughs> well, you have to think, I was doing all those other projects, especially that big blanket and my... Um, With beads. Yeah, the beads. Yep. And my um, big... I was doing another blanket, my Tunisian Square blanket, and I was doing my... Which one? The... the My rainbow shawl. Uh-huh. The So I had a lot of stuff that got me distracted. So I still love it, and I still, like, ooh, I want to start it now. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm kind of saying keep it. Finish it. Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to say? Finish it. Finish it. Finish it. Finish it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't chant that. Finish it. <laughs> yeah, frog it sounds so, so much better when you say it. <laughs> I'm, not, I, I'm not feeling like you've really disengaged with it. I think it just got shoved aside because of other priorities or other things on your needles. So I'm saying make some time and fit that puppy in there. I want to see what it looks like when it's done. <laughs> and how far along are you on it? Like are you about halfway? or? Uh, not even halfway. I, I probably... One, two, three, four, five, six, six stripes of the the contrasting color. So I'm like maybe three quarters of the way. Do you have a picture of what it's supposed to look like when it's finished? Here, yeah, let me screen share with my uh, my mega. How much yarn is there? Uh, each color you need. I was doing the big one, so that for one color you need 325, and for color B you need 440. Okay. So you've got what, forty bucks in there? Yeah. Well, luckily only twenty ish because one color was the um a swap. Okay, so forty bucks worth or worth yeah. of yarn that you love. And a pattern you're excited about. There. Let's see. Screen share. There. Yeah, I'm holding Screen to it. Share. Okay. Can you see that? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. So wait, go back. <laughs> It turned to me. Hang on, I gotta click on you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, so it's solidish at the bottom. Then you go in the two colors together to end up with the teal at the top. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Actually, it's the yeah the teal is at the bottom of that one. 
Right, right, right. But with yours, you would have the brown at the bottom and then interchange the two colors and then go the, back to the teal at the top. The teal will be at the bottom, yeah. Because the brown I always, let me get on my. Oh, you're starting at the neck. Yeah, it starts at the right. neck. Okay. Let me see if it, did I stop I'm finding myself wanting to click on the side pictures on your screen. <laughs> Probably not going to work very well. There, okay. There, that's, but yeah, you start at the top where the color is the brown. So the tealy color will be down at the bottom. So I'm not even half, like, I'm 25% of the way, I think, because you need a lot of stripes for it. <laughs> but now that I see it, I'm like, ooh, I want to do it. So well, I you... love those colorways together, and oh, yeah. Stephen loves Tosh. Lo Stephen loves Tosh is probably one of my favorite Madeline Tosh colors for very clear and obvious reasons. Um, Stephen, and um, any of his patterns are amazing. I I can hear that you definitely want to complete it, and it was just a matter of being shoved aside by other things. So I say go for it. I say finish it. That's my vote. Yeah, <laughs> we get a big smile from Heather. Yay! Yay! Yay. Very I good. Love it. Take, take the time. Um, we've got uh, just a few minutes left, but I want to talk for a second on how uh, you, the viewers, can get your projects into this program. It's a lot of fun. We can. Um, uh, I, I personally have. I don't even want to tell you how many hibernating projects I have that are in little cute little boxes. But when I open up the box, I'm like, ooh, next. <laughs> so. Not that everybody has that, but if you do, if you have projects that you're just not quite sure about and maybe you just need a little encouragement one way or the other, um, let us know. Email us at Plush Our Mountain or um, ping us with some pics in a project story and we'll invite you onto the show um, and we'll go ahead and, and take a look at these projects and uh, give you a chance to sit in as well. So. Um, uh, and if the time frame of the show doesn't work for you, that's fine. We can talk about your projects when you're not here, too. <laughs> um, that's how you get involved. And um, this program is going to be sponsored by Yarn Mountain and by the Knitting Lodge community for the Knitting Lodge community. So we hope you join us there, too. We have a lot of fun with weekly knit-alongs and other projects going on. Um, so any advice to those out there with the, the projects, Patrick? Um, advice how? You mean, like... Encouragement to bring them along so we can oh. hash on them. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I need more coffee. Um, so, really, it's just a matter of y you pick something up and you're looking at it and you just, you have no idea. You don't remember starting it or you started it and you don't remember why. It, bring it on. Who who knows? Um, we're nice. We like to chat. We love ch chatting about knitting and everything else. And it's not like we're gonna just bash you. You gotta bring your stuff on. You gotta you gotta show it out to the public and, and have other people. You need that new fresh pair of eyes. Um, maybe you fell in love with bright pink and black at one point, and you're looking at it now as if you were colorblind back then. And and may, I don't know. Maybe you just had an episode. But bring it <laughs> bring it on and. <laughs> We'll take a look. Look, I'm I'm just being real. So and, and this this program's new. He's right. He's absolutely right. This program is new. Um, so we haven't worked out a good schedule yet. See what works for the knitting lodge. Um, so I think we'll kind of let the the feedback uh, drive us on that, and we'll schedule mm -hmm. out another event so you can watch for that. And we'll so take I, your suggestions too. I mean, this is like Christina said. This is something new. So. Uh, we're, I'm excited about it. I think it'll be a lot of fun. But your your questions can go right on the event page itself, um, and we'll go ahead and take a look at those. And I will um, do whatever I need to do to the video and repost it. And then um, we're going to go ahead and start our regularly scheduled Thursday afternoon knitting hangout. So if you're watching, you're normally a part of that. You can go ahead and join in. Now, if you don't know about the virtual knitting groups, um, they're through the Knitting Lodge community on Google+. Plus. Uh, we meet um, Tuesdays and Thursdays both at... 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 8 p.m. GMT, and then um, also again at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So twice on Thursday, twice on Tuesday, twice on Thursday. We made room for this event today, and then we'll work out a schedule where this fits in. So thank you all for joining in. Uh, Heather, did you have any parting remarks? Um, no, just have fun, and hopefully to see neat um, projects that people want to see if they can finish or they want to frog. <laughs> Hope okay. Goodness. Thanks for joining in, and like I said, post. Go ahead and post your questions, your project suggestions, um, whatever you have for us, right there in the comments, and we will see you again next time. Thanks for joining in. Bye bye. Bye.